Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And in today's video, the portal is Lit Up Gold. That 2x summoning event is on for Sacred Shards. 12% chance now to get a legendary champion from Sacred Shards. We also have a 10x for Shamnath happening at the same time. Um, obviously a 10x event, roughly speaking, good rule of thumb, you're going to have around about a 10% chance if you get a legendary champion from your shard. A 10% chance will be Shemnath. In other words, a 90% chance it's going to be something else. So the chance is kind of low. That being said, though, if, if it did happen to be Shemnath, I'd be pretty happy about that. Uh, I use Shemnath a lot in the Deadwood Jedi faction game. So go check out those videos if you want to see Shemnath really used uh, in action. I think she's a really solid champion. She's a great nuker. Uh, I think my best actual nuker for Arena is I do have um, I do have Kandrophon, but I don't have a good Veil champion to go with him. Um, I, I, I use Foley a good bit, and Chemnath hits a lot harder than Foley. Uh, so I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind. Uh, we're going to pull some Sacred Shards here. I've also, the reason I'm pulling Sacred Shards, I've got tons, of course. We're not going to pull them all. Uh, I like to keep 15 Sacreds. That's my goal. 15 for every guaranteed event. Uh, and then I usually go for Summon Rush events during Fusions. You've probably never seen me pull in a 2x event during a Fusion before, at least not in a long time. The reason I'm pulling today is very simple. I think that this graphic I'm going to show you from Dimadex from my Discord channel, he posted it there, is going to sum it up. This is the fusion for me, guys. This is my fusion now. Um, I love this graphic. It is just amazing. Yeah. Lanatheral Fusion, forget about it. We're going for Anchorite. I think Anchorite's a really great epic champion. I think he's very, very solid. I'm looking forward to getting him. So we are just going to ignore all the other nonsense. I just think it's way too much work for such a bad reward. It's by far the hardest fusion we've had in a long time. The Lanatheral, for me, is just not worth it. No way, no chance. Uh, but yeah, right, let's dive in. I think we're going to pull five shards today. Basically, I'm going to hopefully try get the epic book i'm probably going to pull jamarsa as well try get the epic book for her from the champion chase but uh, we'll see if we hit legendary if we hit gold maybe maybe things will change right let's go five shards funf shards as they say in germany uh there we go we've got jotun up first uh, i think someone left a comment saying check him out again not sure why 40 percent of decreased defense a1 uh-huh uh, full H, 100% uh, chance of HP burn for four turn. Oh, four turns on a three turn cooldown. That's kind of interesting. That's a really long burn. Okay. Then damage decreases the target's max HP. Does more damage if the target's under HP burn. Huh. Hmm. I mean, he's just doing like some single target damage. It's an okay decrease defense. It is a long burn. That is kind of interesting. I didn't realize his burn was four turns long. That's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, he just still doesn't seem great. Like, you'd much rather have a Geomancer and stuff. Here we go! Legendary! Ho, 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 ho! Yes! Yes! Let's go! It's a mother flipping Cupid ace. A mother flipping Cupid. Let's go! All right, that's a great legendary. That's a great legendary. I love his ratings are really good. And these ratings are not going to be considering his buff. This is super hype. This is super hype. Let's jump over so you can see his actual proper stats here this is brand new for me now i don't have venus and venus is the combo champion with cupidus so he's not at full potential yet but this makes the potential of venus extremely hype right if i ever do pull venus from void shards this pr she's probably the best almost the best champion i could pull from voids right now not quite the best but she's like she's one of the top ones no doubt cupidus he has an aoe a1 15% more damage if the target has any debuffs. This hits really hard. He has an AoE A2. This also hits really hard. 100% chance when booked. HP burn. Four turn cooldown. Long enough cooldown. Then on his A3. Three turn cooldown when booked. Increase attack buff on this champion for two turns and then attacks. This does a big single target hit. Especially because he gives himself increased attack. 50% uh, chance of putting HP burn debuff on all enemies for two turns. If it kills an enemy. Debuff can be resisted. This move is definitely his weakest move. The real sort of purpose of this move, to be honest with you, is simply to give him increased attack in like Hydra if you don't have an increased attack buffer there to give it to him. That's really the only real use I feel that there is for this move. That you're better off just spamming his A1 
uh, in Hydra at least with all the War Master procs and stuff. Maybe for a single target nuke, break someone free from a head if they're devoured, but not super useful. Then his passive is insane. Now the passive only works if Venus is on the same team, but 25% more damage, just straight up. He does 25% more damage. And then he always counterattacks when attacked. So in the Hydra clan boss, where so many of those heads have AoE attacks, and there's AoE, uh, you've got four heads to be hitting, and he has an AoE A1, he starts just absolutely pumping out the damage like nobody's business. He also has a 33% ally attack in all battles aura. As you can see his base stats, he's got really good base speed, great base attack and all the rest. So his base HP is actually really strong as well. Bad defense. So I think it's definitely going to be pretty doable to keep him alive. Not With that base HP, it's definitely going to be workable to keep him alive. For Hydra, you do want really good speed. He's just going to be pumping out damage like crazy. Uh, him and Venus together have all your HP burn needs covered. So much AoE damage. Yeah, without Venus, he's definitely not as good. But hey, look, that's one, one part of the puzzle. It's already put together. New champion. I'm really happy for that. That's great. That is awesome. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> He's so much better than Anathril. It's not even funny. Right, let's pull uh, let's pull some more. Let's go. <laughs> Let us go. Another one. Another one. Oh, <laughs> Sacred Order coming in clutch. Bibbled of the Thorn. So, of course, he was uh, a Fragment Legendary this year already. Um, fantastic champ. Extremely good champion. The... the Poor thing about Bivold, the, the sad thing about Bivold, I have done videos showcasing him in Hydra. I actually think he is S tier for Hydra. I think he's ridiculously good. The problem with Bivold, he has one big problem, which was that he is clearly designed to counter the Hydra after the Hydra nerf, but they released the info on Bivold about two weeks before they announced the nerf to Hydra. So specifically, in the Hydra nerf, they made the Head of Decay vulnerable to Provoke. And keeping that Head of Decay provoked, stopping those cleanses, really makes your run so much more consistent. If you want a nice, easy, consistent run, you want to bring Provoke. Bivold, AoE attack that can place Provoke on weak hits. 100% chance to Provoke, AoE attack places it on weak hits. So if he's the wrong affinity, it doesn't matter. If the poison cloud is out there, it doesn't matter. He can still provoke. His A1, same thing. He can still provoke even if he lands a weak hit. This is a 50% chance to provoke. On top of that, he does a ton of healing. He does a ton of healing with his A1. He provides leech with his A2. His A3 also does a really good heal and gives you a good shield as well. Um, yeah, and he brings a great aura, solid aura, 28%. It's not the best, but it's a very solid one. You can use him, like, in the lead with Inquisitor Shemail, for example. Uh, I think he's S tier. I do think, like, Skullord Vargal and Cantra are maybe overall better than him, but he's, like, he's way up there. Super good. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. Slap it in, boys. Uh, I'm obviously not going to build a second Bivold, I don't think, but slap it in. Boom. I'll take that 10% more attack from my Astralon and my brand new Cupidus. He's not going to say no to that. This is going great. I should just pull all these sacreds. This has been amazing. Another? Another? No. Okay, we got ourselves an epic. It's Lich. Uh, Lich, Lich is actually, I think for an early player, he's actually okay, but he's part of the Razin fusion. So nobody really ever uses him because <laughs> you he, he fuse him into Razin, right? But he, he gives himself increased defense and heals himself. And then he has 100% uh, Terminator depletion with a decreased speed. So he's actually pretty useful for Spider. And then he can put decreased accuracy. So you put him into Spider. He tries to keep himself alive with Cocoon. He gives you Terminator depletion, decreased speed, though he can weak hit. Uh, and if he's the negative affinity, it, there's a bit of luck involved. But like for that mission, when you start... well. You've been playing the game for a few months, trying to get Arbiter. You need to beat Spider 20. He is a good option for that. But again, you're probably saving him up for Razen. So unless you get a second one and you're really stuck on Spider, it's not that useful. All right, we're pulling... Uh, I think this is our last one, isn't it? Shard number five? Ah, oh, it's an epic. I was hoping to go all out of the legendaries. Yo, Philja. I actually... I don't know if I have her. I feel like I fused her. Do I have a affiliate? Let me actually double check this and then let's, let's check her. This is a great tip from you guys, by the way. I hadn't thought about it until someone said it in a comment. But what a great way to check if you got a dupe. Ah, okay. We do have a duplicate filled yet, so she's nothing new. But you just use your faction guardians to check if you got dupes. I thought that was so clever. Uh, she's a good champion, though. Again, we'll mention her real fast here at the end. Uh, good AoE damage dealer. She's got okay defensive stats, good speed. 
Um, she has an AoE that gives her a bunch of turn meter and heals her if she crits. So this is great. This is really, really strong. Lots of turn meter. She's going to go fast, keep herself alive. Three turn cooldown AoE. Fantastic. Her A1 is a full turn meter depletion. It's on a four turn cooldown, but this is a great move. Going to be useful against, obviously, Spider and Fire Knight. And really good against the Dark Fae. She's, I think she's particularly good for Dark Fae who is uh, the, the final boss of Doom Tower Rotation 3. Her A1 double hitter does a bit of max HP depletion. Pretty bad, but there it is. And yeah, I mean, that's basically what it, it's okay. You know, it's going to help you a bit against Scarab, but that's pretty much it. It's a double hitter, decent against Fire Knight. Not very good, to be honest. I, as far as I'm aware, this isn't that useful. Then Boon Chant, her passive is great. If she has two or fewer buffs at the start of the turn, gives her increased attack and increased crit damage. So it's just going to enable her to smack. So what this means is that, especially for if you get her early on in the game and you're lacking lots of champions to give you good buffs, she's going to provide herself with that increased attack and increased crit damage. So that makes her really early player friendly, new player friendly, which is great. Again, against the Dark Fae, you're probably not going to be able to bring in increased attack. She's going to give it to herself to really help her nuke down the duplicates of your team, just one-shot them, uh, give herself a bunch of turn meter, and then come in and fully deplete Dark Fae on her second turn after turn meter boosting herself with her A3. I think she's a really solid epic, actually, a great nuking epic overall. Uh, yeah, people giving her about a four. So she, they, they find her weaker in some of these areas. Okay, fair enough. Giving her roughly a four overall. Yeah, I, I think she's probably probably a four. I'd, I'd give her a bit higher than a four, actually, to be honest. It'd be like more 4.4, maybe. 4.4 seems pretty fair. I think she's got some nice potential. Um, but yeah, there you go. Guys, will we do one more? Let, let me see. Hang on. We got two. Let, let me double check this. Uh <laughs> Let me, let me double check. How, where where do we get here? How close are we to this? Uh, not close at all. Nah. We're going we're gonna to call it there, guys. Got some Wuji fragments. Unfortunately, the other Wuji fragments are probably so hard to get. This isn't going to be... Actually, look at this. This is, this is different. So if we look at the original... Hang on. Hang on. Let me pause it. Let me be right back. This is actually pretty spicy. Yeah. Okay, guys. So PSA. Yeah. Um, PSA. That's actually... Okay. This really changes up this fusion. This really changes it up. Look at this. So in the champion chase, Carlinia 20, Wuji 20. From how they presented this in, in the calendar, and what I was basing some of my analysis off of, was that Carlinia would be the easy one to get, and then Wuji would be hard. When I actually come into game, Wuji is the easy one to get, and Carlinia is hard to get. Now, this doesn't affect too much for this. It does mean if you wanted Carlinia, I think she's going to be really hard to get. But this raises a lot of questions. It's it's not so bad for the other events, but for the summoning events, like if you were trying to get Carlinia, if she's the higher, whoever's higher in summon rush is going to be really hard to get. It also means that Wuji is potentially easy to get. If Wuji is the lower reward for summon rush, then Wuji becomes actually very easy to get. I was thinking Wuji was almost impossible to get because she was the higher reward for champ chase and summon rush. It really depend I suspect for Summon Rush they're going to be dicks and they're going to put Carlinia as the easy reward. Wuji is the hard reward. I think having it being flipped between each one, so you need to go deep into both if you want both or you could get easily tricked or baited. I think that's the evil thing to do. Um, but yeah, we'll see. It's certainly for champion training, for example, that could really throw things off for dungeon divers. So this could be quite... Di so for example, if we are going for... Um, if we're going for Anchorite here... Um, yeah, if we're going for Anchorite, he could be quite difficult in champion training Dungeon Divers. It's possible he's the top reward for both of these. So that is going to be a more intensive grind than we would have otherwise thought. That being said, he's not too bad to go for. Um, yeah. Oh, that's that's a twist. There we go. Big twist at the end of the video. I'll try to put a tag on this video to like watch to the end or whatever. That is definitely, that's definitely fairly spicy. <laughs> that's pretty spicy. Doesn't bother me too much because I'm not, not going to be going for this. But uh, there you go, guys. Two legendaries in five shards. I really can't complain. I'm very, very happy with that. Again, what's my plan with the rest of these shards? I'm just going to be saving up. Going to be saving up 15 for the next guaranteed. And then, hey, any extras I get beyond that, we'll just save them up in the next two X sacreds. We're going to have a big pulling, big pulling spree. But I've got... Cupidus, that's a new legendary for me to build. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.